Greetings, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Bringing It Home with C.N. Smith. I am your hostess, Christina Nicole Smith. Some of you may know me by my indigenous name, Adelohoski Agatathnai. This program is about all things homeschool related, from legislation, news updates, creative curriculum ideas, interviews with homeschooling parents, individuals, and businesses that provide insight into the homeschooling experience, as well as my experience as a homeschooling mother of 16 years and counting. You may find my insight on all of these topics useful. If you're watching us today from our YouTube channel, don't forget to hit that like button so YouTube will know to share this content with other interested individuals just like you. You can also click on the subscribe button and then the notification bell to be alerted when new episodes are uploaded. You can also find us on Destiny TV, a new channel on your Roku player. Simply use the search function on your Roku player, type in Destiny TV and look for this logo. When you see it, click on Add Channel and you will then have access to all the local listings. Okay, welcome and a big thank you for joining us today. On today's episode, we have a very special guest that I know you all will be very glad joined us today. Mrs. Destiny Burns is a homeschooling mother of 11 children, a wife, and a budding entrepreneur. As it relates to homeschooling, what she likes to say is, if I can do it, you most definitely can do it. So let's see if we can get her on. Hey. Greetings, Destiny. How are you? I am well. Thank you. How are you? I am well. It's so good to have you on our show today. I'm really excited to talk to you because you have, um, wow, 11 children. What are the age ranges of your children? Yes, ma'am. My 11 children range from, um, so it's a, a lot. So we will start from the top. <laughs> okay. We have three sets of twins. So they are, what are they, 14? Mm -hmm. And then I we have a single that's 14. Mm -hmm. Then we mm -hmm. have a set of twins that's 13. Then we have a set of twins that's 12. Then we have the single. So it's 10, 8, 7, 3. And that rounds out the bunch. So we're a blended family, like yours, mine, and ours. Wow. That is awesome. Ooh, twins. Wow. That is a lot. Okay. So <clears throat> that's more than the Brady Bunch, huh? <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> okay. But now, okay. So at what age were you and your youngest child when you decided to start homeschooling? And what made you decide to go this route? So it, it's been a little blended. It's been very interesting. So we, my husband and I have been talking about homeschooling since, I guess, when I found out I was pregnant with my son. Uh -huh. So my son, the, the youngest one is he just turned seven. Mm -hmm. And so I remember when we found out that it was a boy because we've been trying. So as a, as a married couple, he came in with the twins. I had my single when we met each other. And then when we got married, we, you know, had the children, <laughs> all the other ones. And so I remember when I found out about him that I, um, I, that my husband was like, okay, so we know that, you know, I don't want him in public school. Okay. And so before that time, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, hold on one second. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you're gonna have to hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. When it's like, as soon as I get preoccupied, mm -hmm. mommy has all the answers, right? No, <laughs> she's got all the answers yes. all the time. <laughs> yes. So, I know so about sorry. that. <laughs> so 11 children, mm -hmm. yours, mine, and ours. Mm -hmm. um, when I got pregnant with my son, who is now seven, my husband was like, okay, so I definitely don't want him to go to public school. Mm -hmm. So at the time I didn't have the, um, I don't want to say I wasn't mentally ready to think about that. Mm -hmm. So what, you know, what kind of happened was I was getting my master's degree and I, um, I was getting my master's degree in education. Interestingly enough, I had worked for the education system and I decided to get my master's in transformative education. So I believed that, you know, there, there is a missing link between community 
and family. And that is really where I was going. I was like, if we can just get the community in the schools, then we could change it. Right. Like that was my mindset at the time. Mm -hmm. And, (laughs) and I remember when I got pregnant with my son and my husband was like, yeah, it's a no go. I started thinking about education from a different perspective. Um, I knew that homeschooling was a thing. Mm -hmm. my perspective of homeschooling originally, and this was in 2014, 15. So just Mm -hmm. giving you timeline perspective Mm -hmm. was like, that was kind of a white people thing. And that, (laughs) and not, you know, and I didn't, I wasn't saying it like we didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. I was just saying it like in our community, you weren't seeing it. Okay. Right. It doesn't mean that we weren't doing it right at the time. And I didn't know at the time, it was just that we weren't seeing it. And so Um, I got pregnant with my son. I started working at this school district in Ohio. Um, I was getting my master's. This was like all, you know, a culmination. And um, I ended up doing my master's thesis on the positive effects of homeschooling on African-American young people, (laughs) because I'm the type of person I need to know, like if it's okay, I need to know, you know, if it's good for us, great. And just so happened at the time, universe brought into my world a case study. And this Mm. case study was a family. They were Mm African-American. They moved to the city that I lived in. Mm. Um, At the time, they were like co-pastors of this church that Mm -hmm. was in the city. Mm -hmm. But one of the guys, the pastor, and because I worked for the school, you know, this, we, I was trying to do what I said, I want to bring community. And so mm-hmm. I was engaging church partners and, you know, all these other community partners. And the, I remember the pastor came to me and he was like, you got to meet this family. They're coming in from Atlanta. They homeschool. I know you're like into that. That's your, what you're studying. Right. And I was like, okay. So I met them and they allowed me, they invited me into their home for dinner and they allowed me to essentially, they were my case study. Wow. Uh, the, it was a, a husband and wife. I shout out them to this day. They moved back to Atlanta. They have four children. She's homeschooled all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said exactly where my mind was at. She was like, I had my children. I worked in the schools and I saw mm-hmm. what was going on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, not with mine. <laughs> and mm-hmm. so that started her homeschool journey. And mm-hmm. I wrote my paper. I passed. So I got an A. Um, <laughs> my pro- had to add that. My professor was very impressed and was like, this is really great research. Um, and I did it from the perspective of this is what's going on in public school. Mm. And this is what's going on in public school for black and black and brown babies, mm. specifically boys, specifically girls. And so it talked about adultification of girls. Mm. It talked about the school to prison pipeline. Mm. It talked about um, the opportunities that are not uh, that are not offered mm. to um, students of color and mm. about the AP classes that they qualify for, but that they're not offered. Um, and so it really like it really just went into depth. And that's when it was just like the door cracks open for me. So that was like my first experience of like, okay, we're doing this a little bit. Fast forward a few years, my son, he pretty much was home because my husband, you know, had jobs where he could stay home. The children kind of stayed home with him. You know, I worked outside, but we really made it work. And honestly, daycare is expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we were just like, yeah, well, that's not a luxury, you know, a quote unquote normal working class family at the time. We couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And so um, the pandemic happens Mm -hmm. and it's really funny. And I told my husband, I was like, your prayers must have been like really powerful. That's what I told him. I was like, you must have been speaking to all of them, you know, (laughs) every single one, you know, God, Jesus, whoever you call, they must heard my husband's voice because I kid you not. The pandemic <clears throat> happens and it's right around the time that my, that my child would have been going, my son mm-hmm. would have been going into school mm-hmm. before that he had girls. And in my mind, I had even been prepping people like, oh, what are you going to do with, you know, King, his name's King. What are you going to do with King? Where, where is he going to go? And I was like, oh, he's not, we're going to homeschool him. And I had just been saying it, you know, and he just, and they were like, oh, you're not going to homeschool. And I was like, no, my husband said, I'm, we're going to homeschool. We're probably going to homeschool. Yeah. What are you going to do with the girls? And I was like, I don't know. And here's my mind. Even then I was like, well, you know, they're girls. They can kind of figure out how to survive in the system. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, this it's that process. Mm -hmm. COVID happens. I'm working in a school district. Mm. His sisters are going, one of his sisters is in private because you know, as black parents who are informed, we don't take the leap to public, but we'll put them in private in a minute and just try Mm -hmm. to figure out how to make the things work. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
Um, and granted, I had really been doing a lot of pre-work. Like I, I had a little bit of curriculum. Like I was really ready to like do this thing. And I remember COVID had happened. We were already planning on homeschooling King, but he was in like a pre-K program at the time. And it was like the doors popped open. One, because I was totally informed on, but you know, a lot of times our barriers, new homeschoolers barriers are, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I don't have money. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how to make this work because I have Mm -hmm. life. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that it was going to happen. We were in the process of trying to rearrange our lives so that we could homeschool. COVID happened, shuts the world down. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I call it the I guess the pre-COVID because <laughs> now COVID is still going on, you know, and people still living their life. They back to living their old normal life, right? And mm-hmm. COVID is like a cold and, you know, everybody's doing the thing. <laughs> right. Um, but when it first came out, mm-hmm. the whole world shut down. Yeah. Everybody was inside. I know you're in California, so y'all shut down even more than we did. Y'all like yes. really shut down. Yeah. <laughs> they was like, do not leave your house ever. Mm-hmm. No. And <laughs> so we were like, it wasn't that bad in the South, but I mean, it was kind of like a don't go to the store if you don't have to, right? And so- yeah. What I saw in school was it was like this, you saw a clear divide between the haves and the have nots, Mm. between those who can do Mm. and those who can't didn't. Mm. Um, They gave everybody a a device and said, here you go. It was like a bandaid to a, Mm. you know, to a, to an abscess. Right. Mm -hmm. What's the bandaid going to do? And you saw the clear divide Mm. between, you know, just people who had access to internet at home, to technology, to all the things. It was like their education didn't stop. Boom. Mm -hmm. It kept going. And for those who didn't have that, it didn't. Well, for me, I was already prepping Mm -hmm. and I was already, you know, it's kind of like that foresight. And I feel like Mm -hmm. the universe gave me and I was like, Mm -hmm. and my husband and I were like, I was like, yeah, this is the time. And he was like, you've been ready for this. He was like, and and what's so funny is in the summertime, my kids went to, my kids homeschooled in the summer. So it wasn't like we weren't doing it. It's just that when school started, I was like, okay, I guess I'll go. But then when they would come home on the weekends, we're going to museums. So we're doing all the things already. Right. I was just trying to fit it in around (laughs) the other parameters. Right. Right. When the pandemic happened, I was like, okay this is time. And we start, I started looking at time in a totally different way. Mm. I started looking at time as more of an, of like, it's a construct, right? Mm. Mm. I have the time to raise up my children. Mm. How, how dare I, as a mom, as a wife, give more hours of the day Mm. to people that I did not create. Mm. Um, and then think that mine are just going to be okay. Now, granted, you know, it, it's a process. But when I jumped in, I can't even say that I jumped head in because I was already in. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that the universe allowed COVID to happen to us mm-hmm. um, so that we could really look at time in a different way. Wow. And I know that was a long excuse no. to kind of get to the one thing, but essentially we started really with everybody once we saw what happened with COVID. And we were like, yeah, this ain't gonna work. Mm. And it was just, it was a lot of other things that kind of took place, but my children were ready because we had been doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I had been supplementing for years, which is so funny when you think about the, like the dynamic of that, right. Mm -hmm. For the parents who decide to send their children, like we supplement, right. If it it was really what it was supposed to be, you wouldn't have to supplement. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so to think about it, like, you know, I'm putting you in the camp and I'm putting you over here and I'm doing all the things. And it's like, but you shouldn't have to do that. Mm. You know? Yes. I, I totally agree with that. Um, because I think that's the beauty of homeschooling when, because all the stuff that you would go pay to do like the camps and stuff, you can just do it as a family. Absolutely. And, you know, all these other things, you're supplementing, like if they don't teach certain things, which we know they don't teach a lot of things as far as history mm-hmm. in public school, then you come home and you supplement. Well, okay, well, just read this book, you know, and right. that's, that's incorrect. That's right. That's right. Just read this. They left that out, you know, so. <laughs> you, say, well, you can just, you know, you put that on the test, but this is the real, you know. This is the this, real. This is the real. Like, we, we taught our children how to navigate a mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. Um, that it, it's lying, right? So mm-hmm. if my child mm-hmm. comes home and they tell me a lie, 
I'm going to talk to them about it, right? There might be some disciplinary action because why? You don't lie, right? Mm -hmm. You don't lie. You shouldn't steal. Like there are things you shouldn't do. That's morally wrong. But yet in a country where literally our educational system is pretty much based off of a lie Mm -hmm. and the things that we teach, especially when it comes to, to history and, you know, sometimes even just the other things, like, you know, we don't like, you know, math is a construct. So it's kind of like, I told my son it's black and white. It is, or it's not like, there's Mm -hmm. no gray in math. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the beautiful thing about math science. You can have some gray because it's a hypothesis. You're constantly figuring out what's changing and growing and evolving. But in history, History is pretty much like it is what it is, but I can't continue to tell my children that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves Mm -hmm. when in actuality, he really didn't. Mm -hmm. He right. The 13th, 14th, the 15th Amendment, quote unquote, freed the slaves unless they went to jail, at which point you had to serve peonage and you could be a slave again. Right. Like there's those things that we don't talk about. And then, you know, it's just it's those other little things that our kids don't learn. Like they learn about Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King every year you know and you know what's <laughs> interesting and this is going to be very interesting for the uh viewers too and i want you i want you all to look this up because we were just talking about abraham lincoln and what destin just said a lot of people don't really know that piece of information um let me give you another piece of information about abraham lincoln uh, out of his own autobiography and you can go and look it up but the way he describes himself he describes himself as dark complexion coarse hair and gray eyes and that's in his own autobiography so does that sound does that description match the picture we've been seeing or we've been shown of abraham lincoln all of these years but please do your own research and look that up but it's his own autobiography please go look that up and so that's just a side note but this is why we're here and we're talking about homeschooling right now and why there are advantages to that. So yes. thank you for sharing that, uh, yes, Destiny. So uh, that was a lot. Um, so, okay. So my next question was going to be, did your husband support your decision? So obviously he did, but what about the family? Did the family support his family or your family? Did they support your decision to homeschool the children? I think they did. Mm-hmm. I don't think, um, so my father, he's an educator. He's actually a principal in Cincinnati. Oh, wow. Um, my, you know, my mother, you know, she kind of worked in the nonprofit space, but they know me as their child. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though, you know, I, I'm in my thirties, <laughs> they know that if Destiny's going to make a decision, especially about her children, mm-hmm. um, that it's one that is well thought out and informed. And so mm-hmm. the path that we were on, and really, to be honest with you, I love my parents, but I'm married. Mm-hmm. And so if my husband and I make a decision, that's pretty much the decision that we're going to go with. Right. Um, and I love them and I do, but you know, I'm, I'm a strong believer. Like that's my, I made a commitment. We made a covenant together. So that's what he said. And that's the direction that he wants our children to go well, in. Know, that's the direction it, I'm going in. Well, the reason why I asked, you, no, I agree with that, but we're not, but it's helpful, you know, as far as sometimes, you know, as a married couple, ex- having ex- uh, family support, Uh, Like when you want to just do date night or something like Mm -hmm. that with your husband. So if there's some friction based on other decisions or they don't Mm -hmm. like something. So that's why I asked about that, because that can be an issue sometimes. Well, you're going to school. Why aren't you doing that? Mm -hmm. Or or why aren't you sending them to public school? They need to be socialized. Mm. So did you experience any of that? (laughs) So um, his family or your family? So we didn't. But I will say this, and it's kind of funny. Um, We didn't necessarily experience experience the pushback. I do believe a lot of people had questions. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was more because again, and and there was a a mom I was talking to and she explained it so beautifully that now it's it's something that I kind of I use and I, I always try to, you know, credit her. And I'm like, you know, I was talking to a mom and she said, it's not because we couldn't, it's because we were never offered the opportunity. Right. So it's not because we couldn't homeschool because we're more than capable. It's because we were never offered like, hey, you know that this is an option, right? Mm. And when she said that, I was like, man, that was profound. And so to follow up, like my family, our families never questioned our decision. We've never heard like, a, well, what about socialization? Now, granted, it could also be because we have so many children that socialization happens naturally, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also because I had been on this journey for so long 
that I pretty much knew the answer to that. And even today, like when I talk to new homeschool moms, um, when I, you know, when they're asking, I don't know how to do it, or, you know, I'm getting pushback, right? Which is, I think what you were alluding to. It's interesting, because I always tell them, I always give them an analogy of like, okay, I get socialization and I give it to him from two aspects. I'm like, do you go to church? Do you go to synagogue? Do you go to mosque? Do you go, um, are you on a sports team? Are you, you know, do you go to the library? Do you go to parks? Yeah. Yeah. I do all that stuff. I was like, okay, that's socialization. And I was like, <laughs> like, that's it. I was like, number two. And I was like, I want you to think about your experience in public school, because for the most part, we are some of the first generation homeschoolers, unless you account for those um, members of the nation of Islam, because nation of Islam has really been kind of like been taught to homeschool their children since like the 1930s with, uh, you know, mother Clara Muhammad, that's where you get all the Clara Muhammad schools from. That was her. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she was a big proponent of educating your own children, right. For the safety of the nation, right. Mm -hmm. Among other things. Mm -hmm. And, but for the most part, most of us who grew up in quote unquote, evangelical Christian ish type homes. Mm -hmm. We went to school. Uh, (laughs) We was like, no, y'all can go to school. And so, you know, I, I I asked him, I said, so I want you to tell me like, what was your, like, what kind of socialization did you get in middle school and high school? Excellent question. And then I asked them if they know the true definition of what socialization means, Mm. because I think sometimes we say, oh, well, what about socialization, right? And so I remember looking up the definition of socialization and socialization is the process of learning to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. Mm. Mm. (laughs) So then I asked them, I'm like, you know, and that was heavy. Like when I start breaking it down, I'm like, yes, true definition of socialization. Mm. I don't know that I want my children to be socialized. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and that's, that's just being real. Now, maybe what we're really asking is what about their friends? Mm -hmm. What about their peers? Right. That's a different question, but we're asking about socialization and the society that I know, I don't know that I would want my children to fit into that society. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Period. (laughs) That's just a, you know, that's a, that's a pretty, that's pretty much period. Um, I want them to gain, to make memories. Mm -hmm. I want them to have meaningful friendships. Mm -hmm. I want them to be free. Mm -hmm. I want them to be free to explore and free to, uh, to question and free to think Mm -hmm. and free to, um, understand and comprehend. That's what I want. I want freedom. I don't want socialization. Mm -hmm. And so when I explain that to them, Mm -hmm. I start to see the light bulbs. Because then I think it, it breaks down those constructs about, well, what, what about your kids? Don't they have to go to public school? I'm like, no, they don't have to do no. anything, you know? Right. Um, and I think, you know, from there, our, our family has been really, you know, they've watched our journey. I think they've enjoyed it probably more than, you know, I, I've heard some horror stories, you know, I'm sure you've seen all the Facebook groups and all the things. And I've heard some very disheartening things because as a village, as a people, we've always been communal people. Mm-hmm. It's inside of us. And mm-hmm. I, when I mean us, I mean like people of color, like it, mm-hmm. it's always been a part of us. Mm -hmm. tribes, Mm -hmm. villages, like that's Mm -hmm. always been a part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we, I believe are missing that motherly aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're missing the mothering. I'm going to say the mothering of a community. Mm -hmm. So we're missing the, you know, and I always say like, there was a post the other day and it really resonated with me that talked about like single mothers, like miss, or like, essentially it was talking about how single mothers miss the villageness like the, mm-hmm. if anybody is is, yes. is suffering from the villageness list right <laughs> it, which was a word a totally made up word yeah. was it's single mothers because yeah. the village was what could have surrounded them or you know and obviously you know you can look at well what about the husband or whatever and I get that mm-hmm. but even in a village where there were married women the women stuck together yes we mothered together Mm -hmm. we nurtured we reared Mm -hmm. the children together Mm -hmm. um so 
when we talk about that, even if a woman was widowed, right, mm -hmm. she would have the mothers and the village aunties and every they would mm -hmm. be with her. Right. Um, you know, when when a baby was born, the mothers, the women are in that tent, yes. helping that woman labor yes. and bring children forth into this realm, right? And so mm -hmm. that's what I mean when it's like the village lessness, like the lack of village. Yes. It's yes. really affecting those that, you know, obviously don't have husbands and, you know, and or or whatever. So, you know, I'm glad that our my parents, our parents are re they really do embrace it. They really are. You know, they get a kick out of it. You know, my dad, he you know, every time I go home, he he lives in Ohio and I'm in Tennessee. Every time I go home, he's always giving me something or, hey, have you heard of this? Or, you know, he's given us maps and he's given us things because he knows that I mean, homeschool can be anything. Yes. Right. Homeschool can be the chapstick. Right. It, mm -hmm. Well, what's in the chapstick? You know, that's chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Homeschool mm -hmm. can be cooking. You know, let's get in there and bake some bread. OK, it didn't rain. It didn't rise like it's supposed to. What, if, what are we missing? And, and so homeschool is life school. And so they have really embraced it as grandparents. Um, and even if they did question it, thankfully, they didn't question it in front of us. Not that I would have. I mean, it's not, not right. it's not that I would have flipped out or anything, but it's just it would have given me an opportunity to educate, but I think they saw the positive, you know, the positive aspects of us homeschooling. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, I mean, yeah, this makes the most sense. You know what I'm saying? And so, mm -hmm. so we have been blessed, but I know that there are people out there who aren't as fortunate. And so mm -hmm. I would say there is a village out there, mm -hmm. you know, there's your, your tribe is out there homeschooling, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> that's facts. Okay. Yeah. So um, another thing I'd like to know is, Based on your personal firsthand lived experience, what are the pros and cons to homeschooling? Um, well, homeschooling this many children, because <laughs> I mean, you know, this is this is a large number. It's, not, it's unusual. I'm not saying it's unique, you know, unique. Right. It is. It's not. It's unusual. Yeah. So, so what are the pros and cons to that? Pros and cons to homeschooling a big family. Um,